The 2023 Royal Rumble was insane, guys. So much awesome stuff to talk about on this show. We're going to talk about WrestleMania plans, what we think is going to happen going into WrestleMania, all the awesome things that happen on this show. Let's get right into it. We started off with the men's Royal Rumble match. And as you know, I did a prediction Royal Rumble. I do it yearly, and I got the winner right once again. Cody Rhodes wins the Royal Rumble, and there's so much things to talk about. So many people had a lot of expectations of who they thought would be in the Royal Rumble. Everybody, everybody has been speculating so long and so hard about The Rock coming back and facing Roman Reigns at WrestleMania Hollywood. And it looks like the only place you're going to see that is WSC WrestleMania, unfortunately, because The Rock just doesn't seem like he's going to show up this year. And that's why I thought that Cody Rhodes would win. He's coming back from this injury. Like, he... He's really popular, everybody loves Cody Rhodes, I love Cody Rhodes, and yeah, Roman vs. Cody Rhodes should be a banger at WrestleMania, but we never know what's going to happen on the road to WrestleMania, as we'll get into this discussion later on, but these are the guys that uh, people expected to be in the Royal Rumble, everybody had huge expectations of surprise entrance and stuff, everybody was speculating on whether Zack Ryder, Matt Cardona was going to be in it, and I thought to myself, I didn't put him in my prediction Rumble, I thought to myself, he is only stirring things up just to get himself hype on social media. Literally no credible websites reported that he was coming back to WWE or returning. He was just stirring up stuff trying to get hype for himself. So I knew that he wouldn't actually be in the Royal Rumble. Which unfortunately I think that kind of means that WWE has no interest in him. If, if they wouldn't bring him here, they probably just don't have any interest in him. Hell, they brought back Nia Jax. So I don't think they are interested in Zack Ryder, Matt Cardona at this moment. Um, but honestly, I think it would have been better. We got Booker T in the Royal Rumble, which was cool. I predicted Booker T in the 2020 Royal Rumble because it was in Texas, his hometown. In uh, I think it was Houston. And I thought he would be in that Rumble. So I didn't put him in uh, this year's because this year's was stacked. It was really hard to predict everybody who would be in it. But I think Zack Ryder probably would have been, personally, I would have liked that better for like a one-off legend spot. Uh, a nostalgia spot, should I say. That would have been better for me, I think, Zack Ryder with the woo-woo-woo. That would have been cool, but, you know, Zack Ryder, I guess they just weren't interested in it. And uh, people were speculating Randy Orton, Big E to come back from injury. And, uh, yeah, I think it was just too soon for them. Big E's looking healthy, like he went to Australia recently with the New Day, but I guess it's too soon, and maybe they don't have plans for him. Randy, I really hope he comes back soon. He was so popular before he left. And, you know, Riddle, he got suspended and had to go to rehab and stuff. I thought for sure that uh, he would come back for the Royal Rumble, but he didn't. I think him and Solo Sokoa might have a WrestleMania match after, you know, what happened with them. So maybe they're going to hold off on that and have him return on Raw or something. Dolph Ziggler didn't get in the Royal Rumble this year. He's had a streak. He's been in every single Royal Rumble since 2009. He didn't get a spot this year. But, like, tag team guys, like Montez Ford, uh, Angelo Dawkins, Otis, and Chad Gable, even Elias, all got spots. And, you know, those guys are great, too. But, like, and especially the tag teams, like, they've been on the show every week. They're killing it. They're entertaining. And, you know, I like seeing them in the Royal Rumble. But, I, you know, I think it should probably go to more singles, guys. But, you know, I don't have that much of a problem with it. I think they're all good individual singles wrestlers anyways. You know, Madcap Moss, they announced, like, pretty much 28 entrants before the before the show today. And they put Madcap Moss in there. And I think that was, like, a swerve so that when Logan Paul came out, like, you expected Madcap Moss or something. But, yeah. And then No Shinsuke Nakamura. That is really weird to me. How did Elias get a spot and not Nakamura? When Nakamura is a former Royal Rumble winner, winner of the 2018 Royal Rumble. When has that ever happened where a Royal Rumble winner who's ready and able to wrestle gets shunned and cut from the Royal Rumble? That is weird. And Boogs, I've seen him training uh, online and stuff. He looks in good shape. He looks healthy. I don't know why they didn't bring him back. You know, maybe he's just not ring ready. I don't know. Ronda Rousey didn't show up. Uh, there were rumors that she wasn't going to show up anyways. Naomi, people wanted her to show up. She didn't show up. So I I guess if you had really high expectations, you probably would have been really disappointed with that. But, you know, we got some cool stuff. We got Booker T. We got Edge, who I predicted. We got uh, Logan Paul, who I predicted to come back from injury. Uh, who else did we get? 
We got uh, Nia Jax, which, you know, people are upset with that, but Nia Jax is a star. Uh, the women really needed star power. That women's Royal Rumble was very uh, kind of lackluster in the star power department. They brought uh, Chelsea Green back, and apparently she's got some, like, Karen gimmick, and she broke the record for quickest elimination in the Royal Rumble. So see, people online seem to be uh, angry about that. And Dewdrop came back and she's piping Niven now. Uh, her original name. Yeah, get rid of the Dewdrop name. That sucks. Asuka came back. Love Asuka. The uh, 2018 Royal Rumble winner. She had the new look. The evil face paint. And she looked better than ever in the ring. She was super quick. Super hard hitting. She was great. And, you know, I thought that it would be Cody and Seth 1 and 2, and Cody would go the distance and win the Royal Rumble. But it was Gunther, Gunther that went the distance, uh, and came, you know, second place. That was really cool for Gunther. You know, he broke the record. I actually put a bet on Rhea winning, Cody winning, and someone, I thought it would be Cody, to break the, the longest time in a Royal Rumble record, but... It was actually Gunther who broke that record, so I won the bets, but Gunther broke it, which, you know, that's cool, but when does a heel, like, ever do that? And they did that with Rhea, too. They actually stole my idea with the Cody and Seth going all the way, and they did it with Rhea and Liv, which is, you know, that's cool. But, uh, yeah, this Men's Royal Rumble was, uh, pretty surprising. Not in, like, a lot of surprises, but, like, the way they structured it, there was a lot of, like, big names, like, right out the start, right in the middle. You had Brock Lesnar, you had Drew McIntyre, Sheamus, you had, who else did you have? You had just, like, the big boys, Bobby Lashley, uh, the Judgment Day all out there, and then Edge. You had all of them come out first, and then you had Cody number 30. Now, why I think that happened, why Cody was number 30 and not like one or two or something, is because Sami Zayn, right? Sami Zayn, they did this whole thing in the main event. They did that, well, because it should have main evented. It was the biggest thing, most talked about thing, but they did that because if that happened at the start of the show and the Royal Rumble was later, Everybody would have wanted Sami Zayn to win the Royal Rumble, so they wanted to, you know, minimize that effect by having Cody number 30, and you wouldn't boo Cody at number 30. Also, because people wanted The Rock, and they thought Rock would be number 30. If anyone else came out at number 30 and not Cody, with, you know, all this going on, I guess there probably would have been backlash. So it was kind of perfect for Cody to come out number 30, but it was kind of a weird dynamic, Gunther being in there the whole match, but it also kind of stacked the deck against Cody, it's like this beast has been in there the whole match and he's lasted and now he's chopping that torn peck, surgically repaired torn peck, so that was really cool. Some stuff set up for Mania in this match, let's first talk about this awesome spot with Logan Paul and Ricochet flying into each other, that was like the highlight of the match, that was really really cool, but we had Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley continuing the rivalry, Bobby Lashley I predicted would eliminate Brock Lesnar, how did they not do Brock Lesnar eliminating Amas with like an F5 or something. How I predicted that in the last two years, Brock Lesnar and Amas having some sort of face off, and they didn't do it again. Like, what? How do you not do that? But, you know. You know, we're setting up Bobby Lashley and Brock, and I'm just wondering, like, we've seen this match twice already, and it's kind of been, like, lackluster. It's a dream match, but now we've seen it twice. We're going to see it at WrestleMania, probably. That's probably the Mania match that we're going for, but, like, I'm going to WrestleMania, too, so I'm really invested in, you know, what I'm going to see at WrestleMania live. Hope to see you guys there too. If you're there, you know, if you see me, come say hi and whatever. But, uh, you know, that at WrestleMania, I'm not sure. I probably would rather see Brock and Gunther, who also I predicted to have a face-off in the Rumble. They did. They, did, they didn't really do much though. But, you know, Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar probably need some sort of stipulation or something. Or maybe they've been holding back in their matches. But, yeah. I don't know about, you know, doing that again. But then also in the match, we had a furthering of the story with Dominic. Dominic, that little bastard, he he attacked Ray backstage, we assume, and he took his mask and he came out and wore it. Michael Cole called him a piece of shit on commentary. That was awesome. What the hell? Like, they were swearing all night on commentary. It was crazy what they were getting away with. And, uh, yeah, so it looks like maybe Ray and Dominic at WrestleMania. And, you know, I... I've gotten comments in my recent Royal Rumble, I accidentally kind of screwed up where Solo Sokoa, you know, I'm surprised he wasn't in the Rumble, but 
Ray, like, he went through the middle rope for a 619, and then he kind of jumped uh, to do a springboard and then got, like, hit with a small spike and eliminated. So he kind of got screwed because he didn't, like, fully get over the top rope because I kind of messed up. He was supposed to go, like, kind of over the top. But, uh, yeah, just like my Rumble, Ray got screwed here, and he didn't, he didn't even show up. Even in my Royal Rumble in, like, 2020, like, Ray got screwed. So it's like Ray's getting screwed in all the Rumbles here, and uh, he didn't get to come out. And I, I expected him, like, there was plenty of time for him to, like, show up and come out. I thought he would eliminate Dominic, but he didn't. It was uh, Cody who eliminated Dominic. And the Judgment Day eliminated Edge, so we're doing Edge and Finn again, hopefully with some sort of stipulation again, you know, uh, I don't know about seeing, you know, rematches, matches that we've seen before, especially since I'm going to that WrestleMania, so, but hopefully there's stipulation, hopefully it's good, Edge and uh, AJ Styles cut was kind of lackluster last year, so hopefully Edge has a better match this year, maybe Demon Finn Balor, I don't know, we'll see about that, but... That was pretty much the men's rumble. This finish also, Cody and Gunther was really dramatic, even though it was like, you know, Gunther probably was not gonna win the Royal Rumble, right? So we all knew it was gonna be Cody to win, and you know, he won the match, he hit a crossroads and uh, clotheslined him over the top, but that was pretty damn good, that little finish, probably one of the best finishes ever in the Royal Rumble. But yeah, I can see how people would get disappointed because they have high expectations of returns and stuff. And then we got like a bunch of, you know, you could say mid carders jobbers, tag teams. Even though I like the talent there, like Chad Gable, Otis, Street Profits, like uh, Elias, you know, I don't mind them being featured, but also like maybe you could have done some better people, who knows. And no NXT guys as well, which I prefer, like the talent roster on the main roster right now is really stacked. Why put someone like a Bron Breaker in there just to get eliminated when they have, like, no business, like, on the main roster yet? Like, just wait until they come up, you know? But they did in the Women's Rumble with the NXT women, which I, I was fine with there. But also, Logan Paul eliminated Seth Rollins, and he got in the Final Four, which is pretty crazy. So, what a banger it, it would be, honestly. Logan Paul and Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. Seth Rollins, I don't think he's got anything going on. Logan Paul, Seth Rollins at WrestleMania... I think that'd be cool. Logan kind of needs a win, though. So, I don't know if Logan's going to beat Seth. Seth kind of needs a win. So, it's a, a little bit of a sticky situation there. I was thinking maybe Pat McAfee and Logan Paul would be kind of cool. But, uh, I think, you know, this match would probably be way better. But, yeah, that's the men's rumble. Uh, pretty solid Royal Rumble. I don't know if it was, like, one of the absolute best. But, I think it's up there. It's definitely upper middle of the list. And then we got the, uh, what was it, the pitch black match, which was, it wasn't pitch black, it was like neon, uh, kind of glow in the dark kind of stuff. Bray had like this, like, face paint on, and, you know, he just beat, he beat LA Knight, you know. LA Knight, he, you gotta build him up, he's great on the mic and stuff, but he's literally, he beat Ricochet once with cheating, and beat a local talent. That's it, that's all we've seen on the main roster. And I see people on Twitter talking about LA Knight, facing John Cena at WrestleMania, like, what? What are you guys smoking? Like, he has no credibility whatsoever at all yet. So you gotta build him up, all right? So, you know, uh, Bray Wyatt beat him, and Bray Wyatt also said The Fiend is dead. He's done with The Fiend and stuff, which is disappointing. It's such a big moneymaker and character that we all love. Uh, I don't know why you would get rid of it. He also brought out a new mask at the end of the match which is pretty cool, and they did some weird, wacky stuff, very overproduced at the end, where they fought up uh, into the stands, and you know, Uncle Howdy jumped off something onto LA Knight, completely missed, broke through something, and then explosion happened, pyro, it was just completely overproduced, weird, I, I don't know what was up with that, but yeah, the pitch black match was alright, there was some weird stuff on the announce table, which was like glow in the dark and sparkled and flew out and yeah, you, you know, it is what it is. It was kind of just a squash match. Then we had the Raw Women's Championship. We had Bianca Belair versus Alexa Bliss and Alexa Bliss going back into her evil little ways with Bray Wyatt there. And yeah, it, I, I couldn't really pay attention to this match, honestly. Uh, you know, it was, it was kind of sloppy. Alexa Bliss isn't the best uh, wrestler. 
But uh, Bianca Belair won, and as she should, and it's going to be interesting now with Rhea Ripley, who won the Royal Rumble. We'll talk a bit about that in a second, but it'll be interesting to see if it's Bianca and Rhea or Rhea and Charlotte. I hope it's Rhea and Bianca, because I think that's just a way cooler match. We've already seen Rhea and Charlotte anyways, so I think that should be the match at WrestleMania. Otherwise, what would you do with Bianca? Would you do Alexa again? Would you do Becky? Would you do Bailey? Uh, none of those choices sound good to me. Unless you bring maybe Ronda over to Raw. But again, I think this would be better. So yeah, Bianca retains as she should. Then we got the Women's Royal Rumble match. Very, the, the Women's Royal Rumbles I can't really get that into. Like just the, the women's talent is just kind of lackluster. Uh, this one especially was very... Yeah, there was not much uh, high profile talent. They took out Becky Lynch and Bailey early, like really early. Those are two contenders that you would think would probably win the match, and they took him out. And it's like, well, who the hell is going to win this? Liv, uh, Asuka, and Rhea, and, uh, you know, Nia Jax were, and Raquel Rodriguez were kind of the ones that were, you know, Kind of credible who could win at the end, but I think we all knew it was going to be Rhea to win this, and she did. And they had a really awesome finish to this match, where uh, she was hanging... Well, first off, she spat... Asuka spat the green mist in the eyes of Liv Morgan, and then she did some Matrix kick, like, through the ropes, took her legs out, she got eliminated, and then Liv Morgan, like, kicked her, and then she was dangling. She really had me worried that she was going to, like, touch... Uh, the ground with both feet, but then she did a head scissors and eliminated Liv Morgan. Rhea Ripley goes to WrestleMania. She won from the number one position, making history for the women. So that is cool. So both my Royal Rumble predictions were right. To be fair, they were kind of, if you're, if you're relatively smart and know the game and hear the rumors and stuff, it, they were relatively predictable this year compared to some other years. But yeah, so... That was the women's rumble. Some people are saying is better than the men's. I don't think so. I think it was just kind of lackluster. Uh, but the men's rumble I thought was pretty solid. And also can't forget to mention Kofi botching the spot again. Oh man, he he, he uh, got thrown off the apron and tried to land on the chair, but he fell over and like hit his head on the announce table and it looked like he had like one foot above like hovering above the chair so i thought maybe he would be safe but then they just like completely forgot about it and i guess maybe both feet touched and yeah it's kind of depressing i think it's time to hang up the boots of the royal rumble saves there's literally like nothing you can do anymore there's how many different ways can you really save yourself? Like, I think he's done it for so many years. He didn't do it in the 2020, so I thought we were done there, but he just kept on doing it, and he failed two times in a row. I think we should just call it a day for it. Also, before the main event, we had the performance by Hardy, who sung the sold-out theme for Royal Rumble. I really like the theme, but that performance live sucked, man. Pat McAfee was on commentary singing it just to cover how bad he sounded live. And, you know, musical performances don't really sound that good live for most people. But, yeah, that was, that was pretty bad. Then we have just pure cinema. This was incredible. This is going to go down as one of the best, one of the best angles in WWE history, one of the best moments in WWE history. This ending to the show was incredible. So what happened here, you know, we had Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens and, you know, I, we all knew Roman Reigns was going to win here, you know, how's Kevin Owens going to beat him, you know, at Royal Rumble before WrestleMania? It's just not going to happen. But, you know, this match was pretty good. You know, this is their third match at the Royal Rumble over the years. And the other ones have had stipulations. This one didn't. And I guess it didn't need it. You know, he got speared through the barricade. He got speared in the ring twice, I believe. He also took, like, a, a tumble when he did, like, a moonsault off the top rope. And, like, he slipped on the rope. And basically, at the start of the match, I tweeted this out, too. So follow me on Twitter if you want my live reactions to stuff. And I tweeted this out, Sami Zayn had a cut on the top of his shirt, and with my wrestling knowledge, I can notice things that are just like, uh, out of the norm. So when someone has like a cut on their shirt, you know the shirt's gonna get ripped off. When there's like, some sort of thing on the stage that's not supposed to be there, I know it's, oh, it's gonna be some big, uh, moment, big spot or something, you know. 
uh, things like that. So that was one of the things I noticed. I was like, oh yeah, it's going down tonight. Sami Zayn is getting torn out of the bloodline, and this is what happened. So he beat Kevin Owens. Then they just beat the hell out of Owens, and uh, they handcuffed him to the ropes. By the way, he also took a nasty spot on the steps. He's done it on, like, random roars where he just gets thrown on the steps. Like, it's absolutely nasty. He's a beast. It's crazy that he, that he does that. And he got handcuffed. He's, like, defenseless. They're beating the hell out of him. Super kick, super kick. Sami Zayn's like, oh, man, this is too much. I can't watch this. And then Roman... He's about to hit him with the chair, and then Sammy's like pleading to him. He's like, No, like, you don't need to do this. This is like too far. This is beneath you and stuff. And then Roman's like, hands him the chair, and he's like, You do it. You do it. And, uh, I need it. kind of reminds me of the storyline I did with like Alistair Black and the Fiend and stuff, like forcing him to do something he doesn't want to do and things like that. And it's just a big dilemma. And, you know, Sammy, he kind of refuses to do it. Uh, Sammy, yeah, Roman gets in his face and stuff, talks to him like, you're in the bloodline now, we love you, he doesn't care about you and stuff. This this was crazy, and I was like, oh man, he's gonna hit Reigns with the chair, he's gonna hit Reigns with the chair, and then he does it. Huge pop, massive pop, the, the pop of the night, it was insane. Huge pop, it was like reminiscent of the Shield breakup, but like, this was awesome. And that was one thing I was worried about, with Sami Zayn, I was like, you know, it doesn't make any sense for the she, or not the she, the bloodline to betray him, and he just looks like a gullible idiot. Uh, and then he's supposed to be a babyface. Now he needed to make the move. He needed to be the one to come to his senses and turn on the bloodline, and he did it right here. This was awesome. This is so well executed. Chef's kiss, so great. And then I was also worried about like. You know, the relationship they built up with Sammy and um, Jay. And they set that up so great with that whole story arc. And now, like, he considers him a brother. And the reaction from Jay was so good. Oh, man. Jay was so conflicted. And then Jimmy was, like, really... He was pissed. He was pissed. He beat the hell out of Sammy. Jay was, like, on the verge of crying. Sammy turns to Jay and he's like, I'm sorry. Oh, it was so good. And then Jay... He knows what it's like to deal with Roman. He knows what it's like to, like, have him him screw him over. So Jay's, like, he knows how it feels. And he had, like, this relationship with Sammy. And, yeah, he, he just had enough of it. He walked out. He couldn't handle it. And Samoan spiked to Sammy, just beating the hell out of him. Super kicks. Uh, there was F.U. Roman chance, which was pretty crazy. Ripped the shirt off like I predicted. I saw that coming and man this was awesome roman reigns like dropped the the lay he was gonna give to sammy he like pulled it apart dropped it all over him and yeah we're off to elimination chamber now roman reigns versus sammy Zayn's gonna happen there then it's gonna be somehow we're gonna get to usos versus kevin owens and sammy Zayn at wrestlemania that should be magical if they win the tag titles but uh yeah i could see though People really getting behind Sammy. It's going to be electric in Montreal. Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn. Or possibly in the Elimination Chamber. It would be cool. But I think it's just going to be one-on-one -on -one there. And that should be a great match. Great story. But I don't know if like fans are really going to give up on Sami Zayn. And just do the you know tag match. And not have him go for Roman at WrestleMania. So it'll be interesting. Maybe they'll do you know night one, night two defending each championship but the problem with that is you can't have Roman lose both nights because then it just diminishes like one of them so like Rock Roman would have to like beat one of them like that's what I thought w might happen with Rock like he'd beat Rock one night and then face uh Cody the other night but uh yeah I don't know I think at this rate it's probably just gonna be tag titles for Sammy and Kevin Owens which it probably should be um but you never know, they might tra They might put it in a um, triple threat, Sammy, Roman, and Cody, but then that just takes away a match for Kevin Owens and the Usos, so I think the tag match is the way to go. And now I'm going to break down the WrestleMania card that I think will happen at WrestleMania. I'm going to be at WrestleMania, so I'm invested in this. This is going to be one of the biggest WrestleManias of all time, Triple H in charge. This is going to be so much fun, I can't wait to go there. 
and you know witness it all so it's gonna be roman reigns cody rhodes gonna be kevin owens and Sami Zayn versus the usos gonna be brock lesnar versus lashley gonna be logan paul versus seth rollins gonna be finn balor versus edge gonna be ray versus dominic possibly or maybe uh edge and finn versus uh edge and ray versus finn and dominic possibly uh, then it's going to be Rhea and Bianca, maybe a rematch of uh, Ronda and Charlotte, or, yeah, I don't know what they would do there. Charlotte, who would Charlotte face on the SmackDown side of things? It'd have to be Ronda or maybe Liv Morgan, possibly, since she came second in the Royal Rumble, or maybe they just, I don't know, it's weird. So feels like somebody might have to swap brands or something, like Asuka maybe go to SmackDown or uh, Ronda to Raw. We'll see what happens there. Um, Bailey and Becky seems like it's going to be a WrestleMania match there. Austin Theory versus John Cena for the United States Championship, which I'm super hyped about because I'm a big fan of both guys. Because Austin Theory is my favorite current wrestler, and John Cena is my favorite of all time. So that should be really good. Also, Bray Wyatt versus Uncle Howdy potentially. I don't know who Bray would face otherwise. Uh, it seems like they might be setting that up. Who would he face otherwise? I also saw on the WrestleMania hype package, The Undertaker, like, advertised in the hype package. So, maybe he comes back, but uh, he shouldn't. He shouldn't come back. Leave me to do Bray and Undertaker WrestleMania. And Solo Sokoa versus Riddle, I think. Pat McAfee will probably have a match with somebody. Uh, Sheamus and uh, Drew, what would they do? Maybe they split up the tag titles or something. Maybe Sammy like costs the Usos the tag titles and then that's how Jay hates Sammy and then you just do it for the Raw tag titles or something like that. Stone Cold Steve Austin also rumored for WrestleMania but you know how rumors be. You might get disappointed with stuff like that so uh, hopefully Stone Cold or Undertaker they like show up. Even The Rock hopefully they show up to WrestleMania for some sort of appearance or something because I would love to be in attendance for that. But yeah, especially since I feel like WrestleMania 39, the ticket sales have been so successful because of like the hype about potential Rock and Roman. But uh, yeah, it's going to be really fun. Can't wait to be there live for WrestleMania. This Royal Rumble was pretty awesome. The matches were solid. The angle at the end was incredible. The right winners won. <laughs> the right winners won. Great show. Comment down below what you thought of the Royal Rumble. What do you think the matches for WrestleMania are going to be? Did you enjoy the Royal Rumble? Did you not? Comment down below. Let me know. Smash the like button. Check out my prediction Royal Rumble to see what I got right. And subscribe to the channel for more. And I'll see you guys on the next video. We're on the road to WrestleMania, baby. Yeah.